Well, you know, everywhere has its untold stories, right? Now, everywhere has places, hidden gems and whatnot. And, you know, South Texas is definitely one of them. And, and there's just so many stories that, that are unreal almost, you know, but, but they're part of the fabric of what makes up our communities and what part of the fabric of what makes up our lives. In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about the stories and how we find those stories. Now, discovering the untold stories can take a little bit of work sometimes. Sometimes you have to go to the historical commissions, and sometimes you have to go to the museums, and other times you have to go to the, the just the historical markers, and you have to go out and look for these things. But every little town on the map, no matter where you are in the world, has its own unique story to tell. And with that unique story is something waiting to be told. Now, there's fact, there's fiction, there's... A little bit of drama, you know, there's a little bit of everything in these stories. And as storytellers, that's our job. Go out and find these stories. You know, when I'm riding around South Texas or I'm sitting here in the studio storyboarding something for some photography ideas or some video ideas or something, one of the things I'm doing is I'm scouring historical markers. And these historical markers are found on the side of the road all throughout Texas. The Texas State Historical Commission, different organizations, they do a great job at maintaining these things, adding new ones, adding context. They do a really, really good job. One of the things that I would recommend is searching through the historical records. You know, one of the stories that I'm doing right now uh, is a little bit deeper than, than what I thought it was going to be. When I stopped on the side of the road to read the historical marker, it kind of gave me the 30,000 foot view, right? But then as I kind of started getting into the story a little bit, doing my research, I realized that there was a lot more to this than what was on that marker. So I start doing some interviews, start reaching out to some historical societies, some little commissions, little groups, finding little people, and, and then really getting into these stories. And that's where I usually start. People always ask me where the idea comes from. Uh, sometimes, usually it starts with a song. Usually it starts with a song. Uh, for me, I'll be sitting there listening at a soundtrack or something, or I'll find a little piece of music, or uh, find something I want to use for the story. Uh, usually it starts with a song, and then I kind of start piecing this thing together after I get the song, and I think, okay, well, you know, I have these little notebooks here. Let me show you. I have tons of these little notebooks here that I just jot down my ideas. Maybe I see a historical marker on the side of the road. Maybe I'll see something handy. I'd usually just jot it down here in my little notebook, take a quick little gander, date, place, and time that, that I saw this thing, uh, and then come back to it once I generally hear a song to it. Yeah. So from there, I start doing my research. Uh, I usually start looking, like I say, at historical commissions. I start looking at, uh, you know, documentation. Uh, maybe I'll go out and shoot a little bit of B-roll footage or something, you know, some, you know, on the side of the road somewhere, go, go look at something. Um, depends, you know, I, I like to keep things pretty simple. Nothing more than a GoPro, maybe my Canon R6, something, you know, I, I keep it pretty simple. Uh, and then I can just go out and start, like I say, interviewing people, talking to people, looking at records. Uh, and sometimes the history that we learn is very different than the history that's on that marker. So our job is to uh, basically provide an accurate description of the history as it's presented to us uh, beyond the, the story, right? Beyond what we're seeing and that history could be here in South Texas. It could be in Southern Colorado. It could be in Northern New Mexico. It could be wherever we're at doing a story, wherever I go. 
uh, to produce it. Generally, there's two sides to every door. Don't ever forget that. There's two sides to every door. You know, one of the things that, that I've always learned about this job, histories are made to protect legacies as much as they are to preserve events. Uh, sometimes you have to understand that people are going to alter the histories, they're going to alter the story, they're going to alter, you know, little details in order to make someone's family or, you know, someone's heritage look a little bit better than probably what it was, or they may, may try to alter it to make somebody else look worse, you know. Uh, our job as documentarians, as reporters of this, these facts and, and these histories, is to try to present this in a fair, objective way uh, and try to get to the truth. So then you have to make it really as interesting as you possibly can. Sometimes that can be the hard part. Relying on historical footage, uh, going out and getting your own footage sometimes, going out and putting all this stuff together, sometimes that can be the most difficult part of all of this. But when you do put it all together, especially in a place like South Texas where the stories are so vast, um, you know, sometimes it, it it can be a challenge, but but I think stock footage, getting it yourself uh, as much as you possibly can, that, that's really important. And then trying to connect that modern footage to the story of the past. You know, I, I, I was always kind of inspired by people like Ken Burns. Uh, who could do some really great documentaries relatively simply. Um, I, I guess I never really saw myself as a documentarian, but, but over time, uh, I think that's what we turn into, right? That, that kind of, uh, you know, this job does kind of become a little bit of a documentarian, and I, I've come to enjoy that. So when I'm out going out and I'm finding the stories in the small towns, uh, generally, uh, I go out and I start looking, and, and that's where it usually starts. ABL. Always be looking. Always be looking and jotting stuff down in your little notebook. Because the ideas will come to you in the middle of the night. So evaluating a story, not every story uh, goes on YouTube. Uh, I've got a hell of a library here and not every story that I do goes on YouTube. Uh, it really doesn't. Sometimes I, I hold on to them, I go back and I, I redo them all the time. Um, you know, sometimes I'll, you know, reduce the footage, sometimes I'll redo the photography that goes in there, sometimes I'll redo the music, sometimes I'll rewrite the script, uh, you know. Sometimes I just leave it alone. You know, I've got some projects that I've been sitting on for years uh, that I just haven't gotten to yet. But, uh, you know, I haven't felt comfortable publishing them for whatever reason. You know, maybe there's just some little thing about it that I don't like. So when I go out into these towns, uh, you know, a lot of times don't expect these stories to be published uh, for years sometimes. I'm Matt Pierce, I'm a South Texan, I'm a doc documentary filmmaker, <laughs> and uh, I stumble over my words a lot, and I'm an average guy from South Texas. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Go out and find some stories. <laughs>